I got your calls, your emails, your text messages. Time for Dollar Dilemmas, where all your money dilemmas are solved. Rick in Illinois. Rick, what's your Dollar Dilemma? Hi, Carmen. Um, my question is, you, you hear all these uh, TV shows and radio stations talking about uh, you buy on a pullback or buy on a dip or buy when it drops, uh, you know, 5% or whatever from from a price. How do you know what that starting point is and how do you know, you know, if it's 5% from a certain amount or how do, how do you go about determining that? Uh, we got some good answers for you here, Rick. Let's start with Doug. Yeah, the first thing you need to do is is take a look. Let's say you're going to invest $5,000 into a stock. What I would recommend and I often recommend is cut that in half. Just invest half of what you were going to invest. That leaves you with half of your money that you're planning uh, to buy more if it goes down a little bit further. If you like the stock at $40 a share, you'll like it a lot better at $12 a share. That's the reason you bought it in the first place. So save a little bit of money on the side to buy back in on a dip. If it gets away from you, there's plenty of opportunities. Take that money and go somewhere else with it. That's a good way to do it. Yeah, I mean, I see the lots of opportunities, whether it's down 2 or 4% or when do you buy ivory? Yeah, well, see, these rules of thumb come from these experts, the same ones who are saying, uh, the Goldilocks economy and the smooth landing. Throw the rules of thumb out the window because they don't always work for every environment. Yeah, and, and, and Rick, I, here's what I say is really, it's not about necessarily the dips. Like Doug said, if you fall in love with a stock, you're going to hold on to it for a while. And if we're talking mutual funds here or ETFs or any other kind of investments, pick something that you want to stick with over the long term. And if you do that, that 2% dip or 1% is not going to matter. Linnell in Virginia. Linnell, what's your dollar dilemma? Hi, I'm a soon-to-be divorced 47-year-old dental hygienist. I make $300 a day, four days a week. It'd be my first home that I would buy. Um, I don't have much of a down. I'm wanting to know how much home should I look for to buy because I'd like to find a foreclosure, but I don't know. And I want to get a 15-year fixed mortgage. You want to get a 15 as opposed to a 30? Yeah. Okay, so you know, so your payments will be bigger, so you may have less house, but it can be a very conservative strategy. But uh, Ivory Linnell is not ready yet. No, first of all, the fact that she doesn't have a big down payment to an emergency fund. Mm -hmm. Boilers do break. Uh, th things do go wrong with the home. You need that money on the side. Uh, the next thing is, you know, if you're not working, you know, full time, if you're a dental hygienist and, and you're at all concerned about this environment, now's not the time to get, to get the first home. Sometimes it, it pays the weight and put some money to the side because after all, that, that excessive behavior is what got us to this point in the first place. Linnell, have you sat down with uh, anybody yet to talk about how much of, of a mortgage you can afford? Um, yes. Uh, last year. Okay. I would recommend just starting all over again. Last year was a, a different world. Oh, that's world. a whole other yes. ball But game here's, a good, here's a good way to do it. Find out from them how much of a, a house you can afford and then try to take that money over the next six months every month and put it away and save it as if you're paying a mortgage. If you can do that religiously for six months straight, then you have a shot of making that happen. You'll also know about how much of a house you can afford. Well, Before that, I wouldn't I do said, it. And I Linnell, you don't even have to go to anybody else necessarily to see how much house you can afford. Really, it's about, here's, here's my rule of thumb. It's 30%, around 30% of your monthly take home is your mortgage payment and your property taxes. So you can calculate out from what you take home every month. And if you're going to buy a foreclosure property, make sure you buy it from the bank because it may have a title with liens on it. The people didn't pay the taxes. The, the, the property may not have been kept up to date. Kept up to date. The and and go sure to a couple of foreclosure auctions before you entertain doing anything. You have to sit through about a half a dozen of those to really get the feel of how that works before you do it. Yeah, Linnell, be careful. All right, Mary in Florida. Mary, what's your dollar dilemma? Is this a good time to invest in municipal bonds or can I lose money here? Well, you know, you could in anything, Mary. Anything you invest in pretty much, except maybe T-bills, guys. Well, I think that's a function of your, your tax bracket. If you're in a high tax bracket, obviously, municipal bonds are more attractive. But if you're in a lower tax bracket, the difference in the interest payments really isn't that big of a deal. Also, look at the municipality. You know, you don't want to buy maybe a California mm -hmm. municipal bond. Or, you know, you saw Kansas, they're not paying back some of their tax returns. You see some of the states now need government intervention because they, too, are falling on hard times. Yeah, I mean, we've had callers that have called before, and their muni bonds dropped by 35%, mm -hmm. sure. and they went from triple A to a B. So you have to be careful and do your research, Doug. Yeah, the other thing you should look at is municipal bond funds. Even though they don't have a targeted maturity date, and in that case, a regular bond would give you your principal back, uh, the monthly reinvestment of dividends that you do get on a muni bond fund you can't do in a regular bond you can't reinvest that interest so the compounding that you're getting at these prices right now I think it's a great strategy if, especially if you're in a high tax bracket all right Mary just do your research and look into those bonds what state that you have them in Bill in Ohio Bill what's your dollar dilemma 
Hi, Carmen. I'm a traditional buy and hold investor. Uh, do you think those uh, type of people are dead in this market? Well, and I'm living not, and breathing. <laughs> I'm living and breathing, Bill, so I think I'm alive. I'm traditional buy and hold, Irie. I have asthma. But what, I, what, <laughs> what, I, what I say is this. I, buy and hold is still alive, but buy, hold, and forget is dead. Right. Mm -hmm. What you want to do is change your allocation. 90% of your, your returns are a function of your allocation. So. If you don't have alternative assets or some mm -hmm. precious metals, I think in this environment, it's hard to mitigate some of the volatility. If you set your portfolio up between 1982 and 2007, you probably have the old old style asset allocation. If, if it's buy and hold from then, I think it needs to be re-looked at. Alternative investments, unis, corporates, things like that that you might have had underweighted, you probably want to have overweighted. So I think it's adjusting and adapting, but it's not, uh, It's not. you can't just buy and hold it yeah, and forget Yeah, it's not buy it. and hold forever. Mm -hmm. So Bill, we don't want you to do that. Those guys are gone they don't exist because we don't want them here but you do need to buy and hold for some time and think long term mike in wisconsin sent us a message through facebook he's on the line with us right now mike talk to us hi carmen thanks for taking my call my question is do you think the real estate market is near the bottom and would it be a good time to purchase an investment property well you know the bottom guys we get a lot of callers looking for the bottom the market and the housing market thoughts I, I don't think we're any, anywhere near the bottom I don't know how this mortgage plan is going to work out but we've talked a great deal here about interest rates going up if your interest rate on a two hundred fifty thousand dollar mortgage goes from six percent to nine percent you're paying just as much as someone who has a hundred seventy five thousand dollar loan at nine percent keep in mind that when interest rates go up property values go down and so you can keep the, the payments the same but guess what now your interest deduction is much higher and if you buy a house that's below your means I know that's sort of un-American these days but then <laughs> if you pay more, pack more money to the principal you get it paid off faster particularly if you have a higher interest rate but, so maybe but, waiting does work. But Mike the cycle of real estate is very long take a stock up and down cycle and stretch it out for a dozen years you have mm -hmm. to see a year or two of complete flattening of pricing in real estate before it's going to even begin to go back up so if it's not stabilizing and remaining flat for a year or two I think it's too early Mike you got to look at where it's not about the bottom it's is it time for you to buy that's what you have to look into thank you so much send us your dollar dilemmas through Facebook join our official OTM fan page just head to otm.cnbc.com to sign up can't wait to hear